Hi there, me again, your friendly, enabled, semi-humble shark assaulter. So, um, we're going to do another letter to the alphabet. Uh, Al is currently uploading. I guess I didn't want to finish the upload during the wee hours of the night when I thought it would. Um, Al was on limitations. That is the middle of uploading. We're now going to do D, um, D. D is for disrupted sleep. I say again, D is for disrupted sleep. Uh, a lot of people that have had a stroke, myself included, um, we have difficulty maintaining or initiating a decent night's sleep. Now, and this is this is difficult, um, and we'll get into some of that, why it's difficult in a little while. So when I first had my stroke, I was in the hospital for three days. I slept almost not at all. Um, I'll be honest, the reason why I didn't sleep, I was scared shitless. Absolutely scared shitless. I was uh, more concerned I was going to stroke out again in the hospital than I was anything else. So, once you get home and you give your permission to yourself to sleep, because it took me a couple of days to give myself that permission to sleep, right? Uh, and it was, I was just scared, right? I didn't want to wake up. So, a significant number, uh, and that all depends on the study you read. I've read one half and I've read two thirds. Um, ha of people that have had a stroke have disrupted sleep or a sleeping disorder because of their stroke. Now, when you think of the rejuvenating and restorative factors of sleep, yeah, um, you kind of need the sleep to help recoup the brain. Uh, and I'll be honest, I, I'm of the philosophy, if you've had a stroke, sleep, sleep much, sleep often. Right? Um, sleep as often as you can. Right? So, I'm going to include some links to some of the research I did for this because some of these letters of the alphabet are my personal experiences that require or do not require research as the case may be. So you may have a sleeping problem at night and that can cause problems into the next day. That being being sleepy during the daytime excessively. You may have memory or attention problems. Well, fun fact, you've had a stroke, which can cause memory and attention problems in and of itself. That now gets exacerbated by the, the sleep issues. Headaches, you know, the stroke itself can cause headache. Now that'll be exacerbated by your sleep. Fatigue. Well, stroke in and of itself will cause fatigue for the majority of stroke assaulters. Um... Now the lack of sleep will cause fatigue. Irritability. Well, if you weren't crabby before, you are now. Yeah, that can be a thing. And then the last one, depression or extreme sadness. Well, if you haven't seen my video on uh, post-stroke fatigue or post-stroke anxiety or post-stroke depression, I'll include the links in the description down below. Um, so, this is where you've got to be honest with yourself, right? If you're not getting a decent night's sleep, there are things you can do to treat it, right? Uh, right off the hop, I'm going to say do not treat it with massive amounts of mood, mind-altering substances such as alcohol and drugs. Um, now, I'll be honest, when I was down visiting my brother on the weekend... Um, the one night I did have a couple of beers and I found I fell asleep just brilliantly and pretty much slept through the night. Um, <clears throat> quite surprised at that. However, two beers will not do it for long, right? And all of a sudden you're looking at three beers and then you're looking at five beers <clears throat> and all of a sudden you're a fucking alcoholic, right? So, no. Uh, so... You may need to consult your neurologist. You may need to consult your GP. You may have to ask for a sleep study. 
right, to see if there's something they can do to help diagnose exactly what's going on there, right? Um, in some cases, your doctor may prescribe some kind of dental appliance like a retainer uh, to maintain an open airway. In other cases, you may have to uh, get a pillow to keep yourself from turning. Um, or sewing a tennis ball under your pajamas to make it uncomfortable to roll over. Uh, you may need the CPAP, the Darth Vader gear. Right, so you may need the CPAP gear. Right, uh, in some cases, treating it may be simple as losing weight. Right, uh, now, and that's simply because the heavier you are, um, the difficult, more difficult it can be to, to maintain a regulated, decent night's sleep. Right. So, when it comes to the disrupted sleep, think about it. The night before you go to do something, you're not sleeping well or at all. Or you manage to fall asleep 9, 30, 10, you know, you wake up at 1. And it's like a, you're awake. It's not a sudden, oh, I need to wait. Yeah, it's like, you're awake, right? Bang, done. There's no argument here. You are completely and totally alert and awake. Um, I have started listening to YouTube videos, uh, not my own, but other people. Because if you don't get enough of Jim Baker buckets, you might want to watch some demon planes. Yep, that are planes that are demons or demons that are planes. I'm not sure which. Um, now, so you don't sleep well. Then you've got to go do something the next day. Be that attempt to go to work. Be that go to some rehab appointments. Be that go shopping in a high-stress environment. Right? That's going to set you up for a little bit of a fail because you might be a little bit extra irritable. You might be a little bit extra hypersensitive. You might be already having low energy and fatigue due to the stroke. Now, the lack of sleep is going to exacerbate that. So, when it comes to sleep, sure, because of the fatigue, you may need a nap during the day. And I'm going to suggest you're going to want to limit that nap time to one to three hours, no more than that. Um, but then again, in the initial phases of your recovery, uh, this is something I didn't take advantage of, a, of enough, I think. Um, you're going to want to sleep a lot, right? The more, unfortunately, you're going to have to be a little bit selfish in the beginning part of your recovery. And you're basically going to sleep as much as you need to, right? And you're going to do what you need to do and then probably go right back to sleep. Right? So... Because sleep is the recovery element of the body, right? Your brain will want you to sleep, right? Uh, you may choose to want to do things. Your brain's going to tell you no. Um, and if you can't regulate your sleep well, the next day, next hour, it's just going to be a shit show. So other stroke survivors, or in my case, assaulters, um, have circadian sleep disturbances. Right or sleep sleep wake cycle disorders SWDs, not MWDs. No, no, no. There's no MWDs. No, you're not going to get invaded. Don't worry about that. Um, so now your sleep schedule is no longer determined by night and day. Right, so it doesn't matter what time of day it is. You can sleep or not sleep. <laughs> Uh, you may try bright light therapy um, to help get you back on track. Um, you may have insomnia. Right? You may have trouble falling asleep. You may have trouble staying asleep. Right? Uh, so, and treating any of these may involve, again, many, many practitioners. It may involve your general practitioner. It may involve a neurologist. It may involve a psychiatrist, psychologist, or social worker. It may involve a sleep study. It may or may not involve medication. It may or may not involve medical appliances like the CPAP machine or a retainer or whatnot. So just be mindful that probably the first month or so, yeah, you're probably going to have some deregulated sleep, uh, very disrupted sleep. Um, and that's probably just because the body and the brain aren't liking each other. You're probably still a little bit scared shitless. But once you get into month two, month three, and you're still having difficulty sleeping, um, that's where you need to reach out to your experts and have them set you up for success 
with the appropriate referral, right? And whatever that is, right? And again, I'm not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. So you need to be mindful of when you have these conversations with your healthcare team, you need to be completely honest and completely upfront. Right? And you need to be completely um, in the moment with them. So that may require keeping notes. Uh, when I went to see my neurologist uh, at Stroke Clinic in RVH, uh, I had a, a list, a laundry list of notes. Um, and because of that, him and I had a full on discussion. Now, I'm currently waiting for a referral that will help me with my sleep. Uh, it's going to be uh, basically, we're going to try medical intervention first with some medicines. I uh, got to go see a specialist for that and I'm waiting for a referral for that. So until then, I'm kind of dealing with the disrupted sleep. I'm actually going to give them a call tomorrow just to see where that referral is at. And this again goes back to the, you need to be your own self-advocate. You need to do your own follow-ups, right? Uh, I can also do another follow-up tomorrow with my insurance company. Um, so when it comes down to exactly how your sleep will be impacted, Again, because your stroke is going to be so unique, like you are unique, you may not have very disrupted sleep at all, right? You may have highly disrupted sleep. Uh, you may have an inability to get the sleep. You may have insomnia. You may have the inability to maintain being asleep. You may have very fitful sleep. You, there are so many possibilities when it comes to how your sleep is just going to be right screwed up. So when you try to go to ground and, and get a few good hours of kip, um, it's just not going to happen. Or you're going to fall asleep straight away. You're going to put your head down. You're going to start to go to ground. You're going to close your eyes. The great Zed monster is just going to attack you. And you're asleep. And one hour and 29 minutes later, you're awake. Two hours later, you're awake. And it's not, again, a slow resting kind of go from sleep to awake. It's a, fuck, I'm awake. And... and you're alert, you know. It's not like, oh, I gotta pee. Maybe I need a snack. And I'll run downstairs, grab a bowl of cereal, and come back upstairs. No, it's not that. It's you're full on awake. And I have that. Um, so I'm gonna suggest uh, do what you need to do to, to, to regulate your sleep. And but don't be disrupt destructive. You don't want to start drinking or using a lot of illicit medication or abusing the medication you've been prescribed. You're going to want to make sure that the habits you develop to maintain your sleep are effective and, and, and good for you, not just all over the place. So that being said, uh, just keep in mind that between two thirds and one half of all people that have had stroke um, indicate that they have disrupted or disturbed sleep. Right. So you're not alone here. This is not a is this just me? No, it's not just you. It, it's a thing. And please, um, with your sleep patterns, to seek out to the right people, have the discussions with them, get them to do what you need to do, right? Be the referrals for medicine, be it dental appliances, be it the Darth Vader gear, be it whatever the case may be. And in the long run, you'll start to develop those effective sleep habits. Because my biggest problem right now is I'm getting ready to, to do the return to work phase and I'm looking to have decent sleep. So when I go back to work, I can actually go back to work and work and not be hovering over my desk and wanted a nap. And I'll leave down in the link below uh, the post-stroke fatigue, anxiety and depression. Right. So that those of you who haven't seen those videos can, can grab a, a gander at those. And if you happen to enjoy, you've been watching over the last three and a bit months, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. Now, if there's something you want to see me cover, you can either leave a comment down below or you can get a hold of me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to know someone that's going through a stroke or, or assisting someone through the recovery of their stroke, please share this with them. Maybe you'll get some insight that some of the books don't give you. Speaking of books and insight and stroke... Um, I'm right now almost finished my stroke of insight. Uh, once I get done, I'll do a review about it, right? And, uh, cause it, it has been beneficial to read. 
Um, I know in the first month or two after my stroke, there was no way I would have been able to read it um, and make use of it. Uh, simply because I had some language issues with comprehension and reading things took forever. It still took me a while to read through the amount that I have. Uh, it's not my normal pace. And if you happen to be either see in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, and inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.